Hi, in this video we're going to look at how Kanban is implemented in JIRA and some key concepts that you want to think about. Are you ready? Let's do it. Before we look at how Kanban is applied in JIRA, it's first important to understand the underlying concepts or principles behind this Agile framework. So our Kanban is all about visualizing the flow of work. When you can visualize the flow of work that your team is undertaking, we can identify bottlenecks or delays, and by being able to identify it, we can do something about it. We can improve it, and in turn, our team can deliver value to our customers more quickly. So the common analogy that a lot of people like to use is to think about traffic, traffic on the road. You know how it is, if you're in bumper to bumper, jam-packed traffic, it's gonna take a long time to get where you're going. Whereas if you were to travel at off-peak times, it's a lot more free-flowing, less stress, and you get to your destination much more quickly. Now the same concept goes for the work that your team is doing. You can think about the vehicles on the road as the individual work items that your team is trying to deliver. When they're trying to deliver a lot of work items all at the same time, of course it's like that bumper to bumper traffic. It's gonna take a long time for any of those work items to get to your customer. Now, when it comes to traffic, it's very visual. You can see that. You can look down in the street at peak hour and you can see it's bumper to bumper. Now, when it comes to your team's work, however, it's not so visible. And that's one of the key concepts of Kanban is to make the invisible visible, to make the unseen seen. So what we do is we use what's called Kanban boards to visualize the work that your team is doing. But what we also need to do is we need to make sure that the team doesn't go through that idea of jam-packed traffic, okay? Because it's very slow and it's not really optimal. So to do that, we effectively need to limit the number of vehicles on the road. And in Kanban terms, this is what we call limiting WIP, or limiting work in progress. So by visualizing the work and limiting work in progress, our team can deliver much more effectively. So let's have a look at how we can do this in JIRA. Okay, so to implement Kanban in JIRA, first thing you need to do is to create a Kanban project. So just go up to Projects, click Create Project, select Kanban at the top there, use Template, and here you'll have an option between Team Manage and the Company Manage. Now I'm not gonna talk about this in too much depth, but just know that a Team Manage project obviously can be managed by your team, but is more restrictive, whereas a company managed project would need to be managed by your JIRA admins, but provides a lot more customization. If you'd like to know more about the differences between a team managed Kanban project and a company managed project, just let me know in the comments below and I can create a video on that. But for the moment, let's stick to a nice simple team managed project. Put in your name, uh, so project name, I'll call it test Kanban project, click next, click go to project. Okay, and here is your Kanban board. Now what I'm gonna take you through is just three simple concepts in Kanban and how they're applied here in JIRA. There are more concepts, but I'll save those for another video. Uh, so what are the th concepts I'm gonna take you through? Firstly, columns, secondly, cards, and thirdly, whip limits. Okay, so let's start with columns. So the columns on our Kanban board visualize the stages that our team's work goes through. And you can see here on a basic JIRA Kanban board in a team managed project, we've got three simple columns, to do, in progress, and done. Now with your team, what I suggest is you begin by discussing what is the starting status and what is the ending status. While we've got to do here, a better description might be 
ready for implementation or information received or request received, we can again think about what that column should be called and also what should be the final status, the final column. Should it be done or should it be deployed to production? Should it be assigned to another team or work completed? Again, we can think carefully about what that should be called. And then of course, thinking about what are the stages in between. The stages in between help your team get more transparency about where is the work at. And what that can do for us is help us identify bottlenecks where there are delays, and then the team can optimize that and find better ways to deliver. So in JIRA, when you want to add more statuses, it's very simple. You just click on the plus button there, put in the column name. For example, maybe I'll put in review, let's say, uh, put that in there and then just drag it to where you want it to be. Simple. Okay, so we've covered the columns. Now let's talk about the cards. So the cards on a Kanban board indicate what your team is working on, their work items. Now to create a card, it's very simple. You can see here we've got a create issue button. And then in there we can just say uh, what the card is. Let's say implement homepage. And now with this card, you can just click and drag and progress it across from left to right. Now what's important to think about here is what are we visualizing on this card? And there's many different ways you can do it, but you can see here, of course, we've got the summary there. We can also visualize who it's assigned to. So I've got to assign it to me. You can have avatars there to make it more clearer. We can also right click on these cards and you'll see there's a couple of options here. So adding a flag, if you want to flag it to bring it to the attention of your team, you can do this. So I might say needs more information and then just hit confirm and you can see that it turns a yellow color. You can also add a label here. And so maybe I want to categorize my different cards under themes. I might say, okay, this is related to the user interface or UI. So I'm going to create a theme for that. Just click done and you'll notice that it appears on the card. So it's important to think about, okay, what are you visualizing on the card? What does the team need to see? The other thing you can do here is you can visualize dates. So for example, if I click on the issue, uh, there's no date field on there at the moment, but I can click on configure. I can go down to due date and drag that on. Now I've got due date on the issue, save that. Now I'll go back to the board. And so here on the card, I can open it up and now I can assign a due date. So if I set it to, let's say yesterday, and then I uh, just close it down, you can see there that it will put the date in red on the card. Okay, so it's important to think about Yes, the columns, but also the cards and your team needs to agree. What do we visualize on the cards and what do those visualizations mean? Okay, and the last concept I'll take you through is whip limits with Jira. Establishing whip limits with your team is really important. It is through these whip limits that we're going to optimize the flow of work. So the good news is it's easy to implement whip limits in JIRA. Let me show you how. We simply click on the ellipses up here, the three dots, go configure board. Now here you can see each of our columns there. And what we do is we just click on a column, let's say in progress here. And you'll see that underneath it says maximum number of issues. So what we can do here is we can set it to a number. Let's say I set the whip limit to three. Click update. You'll notice if you're using a company managed project, it's a little bit different, but you'll see the options in there. Okay, so I've now set the in progress column to have a whip limit, a work in progress limit of three. I save changes. Now we go back to the board. Okay, and now we can see that it says a max of three in this in progress column. So what happens if we exceed three? Let me show you. So I'll create another issue here. I'll just call it implement 
contact us page. We have got another one, implement about us page. Okay, now we're at three. Now let's see what happens if I put another one, implement search page, let's say. Ah, now you can see that the column goes red. So this indicates to the team that there is too much work in this in progress column. And what should your team do if they exceed their whip limit? Well, the common thing for a team to do is just to try and get through it and to sometimes ignore the whip limit. But what they really should do is they should be making sure that they are following priorities. And let's say this is in priority order from top to bottom, they need to be putting items back to the previous column. Now let's imagine that one of your developers was working on this implement search page and they say, well, what should I do then? What would we suggest? We would say, well, why don't you help your other teammates implement these other items in progress to push it to the next stage? So you can see how by changing the way the team operates and their mindset, focusing on flow and getting items to go from left to right as quickly as possible, our team is going to deliver more quickly and get value to our customers in a shorter amount of time. So those are some simple concepts to think about when you're applying Kanban using JIRA. Again, think about the columns, think about the cards, and make sure you establish whip limits with your team. Now, there are many other considerations and principles behind Kanban. For example, how do you indicate priorities? How do you indicate blockers and impediments? And do you use swim lanes and grouping the items? If you'd like me to create a video on that and to go into more depth, let me know in the comments below. And if I get enough responses, then I'll, I'll create one. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this short video and it's helped you in some way. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Give us a like if you found this useful and share the video if you find others might find it useful. Otherwise, I'll see you at the next video.